Not long ago, the woman hiding out within these walls got some dark advice. If someone wants to kill you, they will. All you can do is make it harder and more expensive for them. Maybe they'll rethink it. So what I'm doing now is making it more difficult and more expensive. And by the time this goes to air, you will be long gone from here. Yep. Moving constantly, because not only does Elena Kostuchenko think someone's trying to kill her, the evidence suggests they may have already tried. I need some water, I need some smoke. This must feel like a strange conversation to listen to. It's bizarre for Elena as well. A Russian journalist on the run. She does have company. Her longtime partner, Yana. It's done. Yeah, I'm done too. Great. It still has some skin on it. Okay. Some skin is not the problem. It's just some, some bit, bit of skin. Two young Russian women, now a couple on the run. It's very likely that I was poisoned by chlororganic compound. And what is that? This is a toxic shit. So many questions. Let's start with why kill Elena. She does have some profile in Russia bravely joined LGBTQ protests on Moscow streets, got detained a few times. But where she really made a name and possibly an enemy was at the independent newspaper Novaya Gazeta. Its editor was Dmitry Muratov. That's him with Elena in the Moscow newsroom. Journalists are trying to improve the future. We are the tyranny. That's also him getting a Nobel Prize for fighting for press freedom. He's the one who dispatched Elena on the most life-changing assignment of her career. And the first time I knew that I want to be that it was then I was working in Ukraine. Right into the heart of the Russian occupation of Ukraine in her son, where she exposed the brutality of what was happening. The story that you did showing where the where people were detained and, and tortured. It's this place that really got under the skin of Russian authorities when, when you revealed where it was, right? Yeah. But I know you couldn't get inside the building, so it was based on your story that we knew where it was, and so we were taken into it. So this is what it looks like. This is walking through. These are some of the... Interrogation rooms. Yep. Yeah. The stories we heard when we reported from inside that disturbing place were only known to the world because Elena exposed them. Oh yeah, this is the place. What did you hear about this place? People actually described the cells, that they're small and floor is broken and this metallic thing you should eat on or sleep on. I believe you slept on this narrow thing. Mm -hmm. And terrible things happen in here. Yeah. The articles she wrote about what Russians did in her son were yanked from the web by Russian authorities. Novaya Gazeta eventually shut down. And sources warned her there were Russian orders to kill her at a checkpoint in Ukraine. Her editor insisted she get out, but not go back to Russia. He told me in Russia, you're gonna be killed. And I'm like, do you know for sure? And he's like, I know for sure, you just cannot go back. <laughs> and I just started screaming. Then she got busy, eventually moving to the presumed safety of Germany. Knowing those at odds with Vladimir Putin have a nasty habit of dying. Russian state media is now claiming that Wagner Group chief Prigozhin has been killed in a plane crash. Yevgeny Prigozhin, who tried to start an insurrection, reportedly killed in a plane crash. Alexei Navalny is in intensive care and unconscious in the hospital. Opposition leader Alexei Navalny poisoned repeatedly. Oligarchs and defense officials who fall out of favor fall out of windows too. A spy and his daughter apparently poisoned. ABC Sergei Skripal. 
once a low-level spy turned double agent and his daughter Yulia found slumped on a bench in England, poisoned with a nerve agent. The first investigation we did on the poisonings made by Russian intelligence was poisoning of the Skripal family, but of course... Even Investigative the, journalist Roman Dobrokhatov had his own trouble in Russia for his work. Arrested, pursued, now living in hiding himself. Do you think it's likely to be a very dangerous time in Russia or outside of Russia if you're a dissident or a critic? Yeah, it looks like Putin sees journalists who, at least in the first period of the war, who reported uh, about the war as, as a combatant that a legitimate target for him. And when you get in this uh, kill list, it is very difficult to get out of it. Which is why Dobrohotov and a team at the paper The Insider have been studying a few Russian exiles in Europe who became curiously ill at roughly the same time, poisoning a possibility with each person, Elena Kostuchenko among them. I think it was somewhere in March when I heard that something happened with Elena Kostuchenko. She can't work, she feels ill, and uh, there is something suspicious. He said, we are working now on an investigation of series of poisonings in Europe. Targets are female Russian journalists. Do you have any health issues now? And I'm like, yes. My doctor's thinking I was poisoned. So then she told him the story. It was October 17th, 2022. Elena, living in Berlin, was trying to get back on a reporting trip to Ukraine. Needed to go to Munich for a visa. She contacted a friend over Facebook Messenger to say she was coming, and then she took a train. She went to Munich on a night train. She slept there, and she also put her boots uh, on a floor. So she took her shoes off. She took her shoes off, and we know from Russian experience that there were cases when they used chlororganic chemicals putting in a, in a shoes, and uh, it came through the skin. Arriving in Munich, she was fine. Went to the consulate, ate with a friend at a local restaurant, used the bathroom. Then they got in the car back to the train station, and that's where things got odd. Her friend told her she suddenly smelled terrible. And I was like really surprised because like she's such a polite person. She would never say so if I weren't smell awful. And I'm really sweating a lot. That smell is strange. It doesn't smell like a sweat, it smells like um, rotten fruits. I cleaned myself up, went back to the seat. I started to read through the manuscript of my book. I noticed that I'm reading same paragraph again and again and again. And not just because you were tired. I cannot move forward and I have a headache. And it gets stronger. The headache got worse. Once at her stop, she says she was suddenly confused about how to get home, normally a five minute walk away. Don't understand what direction should I take. And I just cried. Then came the pulsing, sharp stomach pain, swollen fingers, burning skin. Multiple doctors had no answers except for one. He texted me, do you think it's possible uh, you've been poisoned <laughs> and I texted him back like no I'm not so dangerous <laughs> and then I came home and I told Yana and we were laughing so much and Yana was like okay sure like the simplest explanation like Russian journalist of course you've been poisoned so we didn't to, to take it seriously at all Nearly a year later, though, and Elena still struggles with not enough energy to concentrate for more than a few hours. More patterns have emerged. Days after Elena became sick, journalist Irina Babloyan fell ill in Tbilisi, her symptoms similar. Months later, another Russian in exile, Natalia Arno, awoke in a hotel room in Prague with acute pain that spread and lingers. Russian women getting very sick, but not dying. Sometimes poisoning kills people, sometimes it does not. What do we read into that? Is it that they were inept and didn't kill them, or was there actually a message in the making them ill but not dead? Well, I think the main feature of the poisons like Novichok uh, or some other like uh, chlororganic um, chemicals is that um, it is very difficult to find them. 
Just maybe, one theory goes, making someone sick enough to stop working achieves the goal, shuts them up, makes them paranoid, makes others doubt their stories. Because where's the proof poisoning happened? Berlin police are investigating Elena's case, and Roman and his team have some work to do. What we want to do is to find some digital trace of some Russian agents coming to Munich and bringing the poison, because uh, they can't just sit in, in Munich with poison waiting for some activists to come. I think that we have idea how to check it. How do you do that, Roman? Well, not disclosing all the tricks. We can say that every Russian agent, when he travels, he leaves a lot of digital traces. Cell phone, he buys tickets, CCTV? cameras, CCTV, if, if it used. Right in this application... There are open source apps they use to try to track those who may have gone after the women and contacts in Russia who may help with leaked data. This is as dangerous as it sounds. There were people trying to follow me um, in different countries. And their aim was to kidnap and to return me back to Russia. It's absolutely clear that uh, they don't like the work that we are doing, which means that we are doing everything good. That may be true, but getting to the truth doesn't mean the threat of attacks disappears. Just look at how Russian propagandists talk about Novaya Gazeta and Elena right now. Traitors, trash, scumbags and lesbians, he calls them. Going on to question why more isn't done to block them. They might soon be even angrier. Before she became ill, Elena was writing a book called I Love Russia. What was exciting now unnerves. This book is about how fascism descended into Russia. It's about how Russia really looks like. What happens when this book comes out, do you think? Uh, the investigative journalists who are investigating on my case, they both thinking that it can be a trigger for the people who tried to kill me. They might try again. So that's why I actually decided to go public with uh, this assassination attempt. Though publicity is not a solid protection, but it is a protection. And I want to use everything to protect myself because I have so much work to do and I have big plans. So how do you live your life then? How do they? For now, it means effectively moving constantly. Elena insisting she's not really afraid. It's hard for me to relate to not being afraid, not looking at the road or listening in the drive or wondering at night what those sounds are. You've been able to push all that away? Um, but I don't like because... Jana does feel fear. And uh, for her, last year was completely nightmare. You hear a strange sound behind the door, like some car parking, or, you know, just neighbors talking too loud. Yeah, no, do this thing, mm -hmm. and I don't want the woman I love, you know, feel all this fear. So they exist and they work on living. <laughs> living in the moment, in the flashes of safety and comfort that distract from the reality that they may be forever on the run. <laughs> <laughs>